Hi. In this video, I want to explain the multiplication of 3D transformation matrices. So I want to explain what is matrix multiplication, what it is used for, and how it works. And hopefully this leads to an understanding about what it actually does. So what is a transformation matrix? Well, we can do several things with it. And one thing we can do is to transform vectors. Like Mr. Boxy is showing here a forward vector and it's also demonstrating how itself is being transformed. Because when we talk about transformation, we talk about scaling. So he's a little bit squishy and the vector gets transformed properly like it should. And he can also show us what a translation looks like by jumping up and down happily. And even more so when rotating a little bit. So he's now rotating by the x axis. But a form of transformation that is also possible but not used so often is shearing. So to make it a little bit more clear what it means is he's steady except, yeah, being a little bit in a dance motion, I think. Well, it has some appliances, but shearing is not seen so often in animations or transformations. Now, another thing that a transformation matrix can do is to transform other matrices. Like, yeah, here, where we combine multiple transformation matrices by multiplying them. Like the base is transforming the upper arm matrix, the lower arm matrix, the wrist matrix, and so on. All these are matrices which are drawn here. And by multiplying them, we combine them. So A times B, when both are matrices, result in a matrix that combines these operations. And this operation is not commutative. That means that A times B is not equals B times A. If you wonder why, well, if you first walk five steps forward and then you turn to the right, you will end up in a different place than when you first turn to the right and then move five steps forward. And this is why this does not work. Now, where do we use this kind of operation? Well, whenever we want to attach objects to another object. For instance, we have the robot base. It's located here. This is a transformation matrix at this location. Now the upper arm is attached to the base. And well, this is now the transformation matrix we use here. And the lower arm is a child of the upper arm and it's located here and rotated differently. And naturally, when we rotate the base, we will rotate everything that is attached to the robot. And all this is done through matrix multiplications. Now let's have a look at what these matrices are looking like. So I'm taking three matrices. These are the local space matrices of our robot arm. So the base sits conveniently at 0, 0, 0, and there's no rotation. So what we see here is an identity matrix. That means everywhere it's zeros except on the diagonal where it's ones. The upper arm looks very similar. There's currently no rotation in place, but it has a translation. 0.75 units upwards. So the distance from here to here is 0.75 units. The lower arm matrix is similar, but it says it's 1.67 units from here to here. And when we combine them all together, base times upper arm times lower arm, we get this matrix here. And well, this not so interesting. Um, it's just the sum of all these operations. So the distance from here to here is 2.42 units. This changes when we rotate it. While the positions have not changed because we didn't rotate it on an axis where this would happen, we see that the base rotation is being reflected in the result here. Since these are local space matrices, this has no effect here, of course not. And this changes when we explicitly rotate the upper arm. Let's rotate it by 45 degrees. And now you see that this has 
uh, cause the change down here. And the numbers look similar, but they are in a different place and they also have different signs. Like here's this one is negative, now this one is negative. Now we can rotate the lower arm as well by 45 degrees, which has this nice property that now the numbers look very clean again. It's just 001, 100, and so on. Now we still see that this uh, first column is identical, but these two other columns, they are swapped and one is negated, which is always a sign of a 90 degree uh, um, direction change. So naturally, if you rotate two times by 45 degrees, you will get a 90 degrees rotation. Now, we can also use the matrix multiplication to do something else, and that is to produce a continuous motion or to describe motion. I want to demonstrate this together with Mr. Boxy here by picking him up and letting him rotate a little bit. So we have a rotation matrix and we use this matrix to multiply his personal matrix and we take the result and use it for the next uh, multiplication again. And that results in a continuous rotation motion. The numbers are fairly small, so the changes are small. Let's make the numbers a little bit bigger. He's rotating faster now. And you see that the numbers are changing faster. And eh, this is still looking relatively similar. So let's make a more drastic change. I'm sure this is okay for him. Um, but we can now clearly see the numbers here are much different. And this results in a very fast motion. So what I want you to see is that this middle ex uh, the, the, the second column is not changing at all. It's constant and the positions are also not changing. But let's give him a little bit of a break before we go over to the next phase. We want to see what it looks like when we change the direction of the angle. So now his upward direction has changed. It is no longer upwards, but pointing into a weird other direction and everything here looks a little bit more chaotic. But what happens if we start rotating again? So we see different numbers here again, but the second row as uh, a second column stays the same. So this is constant and the positions are also not changing. This only changes once we start rotating him around another axis continuously again. Now these numbers become more or less chaos and this is exactly what we would expect when we rotate widely around two different axes over time. Now, I haven't explained anything about how the multiplication looks like. So let's give Mr. Boxy a small break to recover. I think he doesn't need long. And instead, let's have a look at the numbers. So these are a lot of numbers, but this is simply just a matrix, another matrix and another matrix. So let's not get overwhelmed here and begin on the left side. Let's have a look. This is the translation part of this matrix, which is otherwise not rotating anything. So we see everything is just orderly oriented. This matrix is translating into that direction. So half to the right, one to the bottom. Whereas this one, the green one goes 1.25 units to the right and one unit up. And the combination of those, because no rotation is involved, is fairly simple. It's this vector plus this vector, which leads us to this point. However, this changes when we introduce a rotation. So just as a reminder, the red arrow represents the first column, the green arrow the second, and the blue one the third one. Now, let's draw also a circle in here that helps us to see this property of how the rotation works. So the brown colored arrow is 
this direction vector. It's the same length. And when we rotate this transformation matrix like this, we can see that this brown vector is staying in the relative same direction to this matrix. And the, we can also see that the rotation direction of the resulting operation is exactly the same as this one because here is no rotation involved and that means that the result will have the same orientation as the matrix it was multiplied with. This changes when we make a counter direction on the second matrix. So now this matrix is rotating 45 degrees to the left and this one is rotating 45 degrees to the right. And the result when we multiply both of the, uh, these matrices is that this matrix again shows no sign of any rotation, but it is at a different location now. It was rotated by 45 degrees. Now, let's have a look at the numbers. So I will make myself vanish so we get the full picture. I will try to break down the multiplication uh, the easiest way I could think of. And that means that we first take a look on the first column of the second matrix and we take that column and look at it as if it was a vector. So this is a vector and we mul multiply it with this matrix, which is the same matrix as up here. And the result is another vector, of course. And this is then placed into the first row uh, column of the uh, resulting matrix. So let's go over it one more time, how the multiplication of a vector with a matrix works. So this is the first column here. And we take the first column and multiply it with the first number in our vector. Then we add the second column, multiply it with the second value, the third column with the third value and the fourth column with the fourth value. And when we multiply 0.71 with 0.71, the result is 0.5. So here the result is 0.5 and here the result is also 0.5 because both numbers are negative. And when we add both, we get a one. And the same happens for the third uh, row, except that here it's a positive number multiplied with a negative number. So it's 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5, which gives us zero. And since all the other values in the vector are zero, the other vectors of this matrix have no impact. So then we take the second column, do the same operation again. This is very simple because we see it's just one um, row where a value is going to be used and that is the second column. So th this result is being produced because yeah, this is the only one. Everything else is just zero. So we get the exact same vector here. Now, for the third column, it's the same. And for the fourth column, we have a bit of a variation. The fourth value now is one, which is interesting because this is the translation part of our vector. And because this last number is one, the translation part of this matrix is taken into consideration. So we take this translation part here. So this vector and we add it to the um, position that we have multiplied with the rotational part. And that is the reason why we are rotating here. I hope this cleared a few things up. Um, this visual explanation, what is happening here. So let's look at the summary. So to summarize, 
what we have seen is that transformation matrices can be combined via multiplication. So the result of dozens of matrix multiplications describe in one single matrix the final transformation. And this can be used to then transform thousands of vectors to render complex geometry. This is important. I mean, modern 3D models can easily have hundreds of thousands of vertices and more. And this is possible because we have an easy way to combine such transformations. What we have also seen is that the multiplication of matrices can be understood as a combination of matrix vector multiplications. So once you have learned and memorized how the vector matrix multiplication works like, you have now a way to remember how the matrix matrix operation uh, multiplication works. And we have also seen that Mr. Box is a great assistant and he's very tolerant for motion sickness. And therefore, I think we should, for the next video, go into space. Well, maybe not. The next video is about coordinate spaces and what we can do with it. So I hope to see you around. Leave a like, subscribe and see you soon.